everybody, Scott Spritzer here, DocSports.com, and welcome to the update for August 1st, 2019. Hall of Fame game is here, preseason NFL football. That means we're talking football every week from now until February 2nd, 2020. And uh, so we're going to have a lot to talk about over the next several months and uh, some preseason talk that we're really going to get into next week when we drop the big card, the first big card uh, next week. But a uh, quick reminder before we get to what's going on, big discount today over at Doc Sports. Sports.com. A quick reminder that if you're looking for our football plays over at DocSports.com, they post at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific on Thursdays. That's CFL, college football, NFL, includes the NFL preseason. It all goes at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific, each and every Thursday throughout the course of the season. In fact, my CFL will be posted for the upcoming week today, Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific time. Just a quick reminder because you've been asking me uh, direct messages on Twitter and uh, also here, and I just wanted to let everybody know again, refresh your memory, remind you, football, whether it be college, NFL, NFL preseason, or CFL, all released 6 p.m. Eastern every Thursday throughout the course of the season. All right, before I get to the free pick and before I get to a college football future play, I got a real quick note to tell you about on Thursday. Nice little discount. 25% off daily or weekly packages in Major League Baseball and the WNBA. You can grab either. You can grab both. You can grab as many cappers as you want with this deal. The code is MLB25WNBA. MLB25WNBA. Again, either baseball, WNBA, or both. 25% off daily and weekly packages only. And it's only good today. Starts at 4 a.m. Eastern time on Thursday. Goes right through 11 p.m. Eastern time on Thursday night. The prices go back uh, to the regular price. So, again, all you got to do, let's say you go over to my homepage over at DocSports.com. You want to buy a week of my Major League Baseball. You click on that package. A little box will pop up. You enter the code MLB25WNBA, and you'll get 20 25% off. Again, it's today only. It ends at 11 p.m. Eastern on Thursday night. It all kicks off at 4 a.m. Eastern, 1 a.m. Pacific on Thursday morning. All right, a little bit about what's going on for me on Thursday. Uh, yesterday, small profit in baseball. We did lose the small play with the KC Royals, uh, which was our free pick also. We won the bigger play, top play of the day in baseball on the LA Dodgers, the big ninth inning out of the LA Bats. Uh, WNBA, we had a small play, three-unit play. We did lose after that nice seven-unit winner two nights ago. Uh, still hitting over 65% of the WNBA with our last 31 plays, around 65%. And we will be in WNBA action on Thursday. I've got a five unit play going on Thursday's slate as we look to get right back in the win column in the WNBA. As far as baseball is concerned, listen, last week we went a perfect 3-0 in baseball, picked up $2,000 for $100 per unit betters with our six unit and seven unit plays, our high plays, high rated plays over at DocSports.com. And uh, that 3-0 card was great. We haven't had a six unit or seven unit baseball so far this week, but I got one going on Thursday and it's over at DocSports.com. Now, the WNBA will be posted at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. Uh, the Major League Baseball will be posted at 11.30 a.m. Eastern, 8.30 a.m. Pacific. And again, in baseball, uh, a big play, an elite level play uh, as we like to go to 4-0 since the start of last week with these 6-7 and seven unit plays. So that's available on Thursday along with the 5-unit play in the WNBA. And check out our football plays at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific, CFL action on Thursday at DocSports.com. I'm not going to be in action in the Hall of Fame game. We've seen some wacky line movement obviously in this first game it's not unusual for me to pass the hall of fame game and that's what we're going to do here we'll wait till everybody gets basically involved next week and that's when we'll really jump in to preseason football uh, let's get to our college football preview, or not preview, but a thumbnail sketch on one of the futures that we've got. We talked about this the last couple of days that we would have this today. Last year, if you were with me, if you were watching these videos, you'll recall how well we did with Utah State. It was one of our biggest plays, biggest futures of the entire season. They go on to an 11-win season. We cleaned up in a lot of spots with Utah State throughout the course of the year and on that over-under wins total that we gave you. Now, they're likely not going to win 11 games this year with the changes that have 
happened up in Logan, uh, but we do think that Utah State is in overplay once again. Now, using the Westgate Superbook numbers uh, for this particular situation, we've got Utah State over six wins minus a dollar twenty-five. Now, you know about the coaching change, obviously. Uh, by the way, I think it said over six wins. It's over six and a half wins minus a dollar twenty. Over six and a half minus a dollar twenty. Uh, you know about the coaching change. Matt Wells did so well with this program that he got a job at Texas Tech. And when you look at who's coming back, it's an old familiar face in Logan. It is Gary Anderson. Now, I'm not always crazy about coaches' second stints uh, at schools. We've seen coaches drop off and those records drop off a little bit. Not a lot in some cases. For instance, if you remember, Chris Salt wasn't all that bad in his drop off up at Nevada, Reno. Uh, we've seen, you know, similar fates, I guess you could call it. Snyder at K-State second time around. Not quite as good as the first time, but still quality football. Now, Petrino is probably, Bobby Petrino is the biggest drop off in the program at Louisville from the first time he was there to the second time. But I think he's the right man for the job. I really do. Talking about Gary Anderson going back to Utah State. He does have uh, some issues, some replacements to make up front on the offensive line. Uh, his top running back being gone, but his second best running back from last year who gained almost 900 yards is back. His name is Bright. You got Jordan Love at quarterback. Might be the best running quarterback in all of college football this year. Certainly in the top four or five in that discussion. And the defense does return seven of 11 starters. They're going to lose three of the top four tacklers, but I think they're going to have pass rush capability again. I like their defensive tackles. I like like what they're looking like up front through spring and as we get into uh, the month of August with this team. And I think the backfield will be just fine. Talking about the secondary, both corners and safeties, I like what they got coming in. And Utah State has had a couple of phenomenal recruiting classes, phenomenal relatively speaking to what they've usually done over the years in Logan, Utah. So Listen, the final, uh, the, the final piece of this puzzle, so to speak, when you look at who's coming back and the fact that I do think Jordan Love is going to have another big year in this offense, also the fact that Gary Anderson is not going to run the same type of offense he did when he was there before, but you look at the schedule, and I think it breaks down favorably. Uh, I'm not going to be shocked at all if they open up the season with a win on the road at Wake Forest. Wake Forest has their own issues. They've had injuries in on the defensive side of the football getting ready for the season that's going to cost this team a little more. Now, right now, Wake is laying uh, three and a half for the most part in this opening game. They're at home. Uh, there is a three out there I saw on the Vegas Strip. I think it was at the Mirage. Uh, but anyway, I do think this is a game that Utah State, again, if they lose or win, uh, I don't need a win here, I guess I should say, for me to get that over six and a half, at least the way I planned out their schedule. But I'm not going to be shocked if they do get, a, get us a win. And then it's an added bonus. They got Stony Brook after Wake. That's a 2-0 start, maybe 1-1 one one at the very worst. And I'll give you one little spot on the schedule for Utah State here where I think uh, you might look to play against them. Doesn't mean you automatically do, but they end the month of September at San Diego State, home against Colorado State, and then they open up the month of October with a road game in Baton Rouge against LSU. Uh, so that Colorado State game at home in between at San Diego State and at LSU, that's looking like a real tough potential sandwich spot if they come out of the gates hot and if Colorado State is playing as poorly as we think they will this year for the most part, Utah State's going to be uh, laying a decent amount amount of points there. That might be a nice spot on September 28th to grab the points with Colorado State. Not saying that it's an automatic, but it is certainly something you want to write down, jot down, and we'll let you know, obviously, by that week if we're going to be involved in that game. Maybe we decide to go with Utah State, but right now that's looking like a real solid sandwich spot on their schedule. But you break down uh, the entire conference schedule, even again, if they go one and one outside of conference those first two games, they're going to lose to LSU in all likelihood, so there's one and two. But when I break down their schedule uh, in conference play, I think there's a couple of wins that some aren't counted on. I think they're going to beat Fresno. Fresno's going to be well coached again. There's no doubt in my mind about that. Great head coach, great coaching staff. But I think Fresno's going to be down a tad. They're not going to drop off big time, but down a little bit this year to where I think the Aggies can win that game against the Bulldogs. I think they can beat BYU when they face the Cougars at home. So there are spots on the schedule where I think Utah State is going to come away with wins where maybe some don't believe they will. Now again, that over-under wins total, six and a half minus a buck 20 on the over at the Westgate. And, and I think they're going to win eight games this year. I really do. So I've got Utah State earmarked for an eight-win season. We'd like them to go over that posted total of six and a half wins. And then if we get a game that doesn't go our way, we still got a little bit of cushion uh, looking at a game and a half over that current wins total. 
uh, over the Westgate Superbook. So Utah State over six and a half minus a dollar twenty. We're gonna have more college football futures over under win totals, that kind of good stuff uh, over the next oh, week or two. And uh, the next time that I talk about college football, I'm not sure if we're gonna do it on Friday. It might be Saturday, but one of the next couple of days, we're gonna be looking at a Pac-12 team that I think you'll be interested in, but a Pac-12 team that we're gonna look at next. As far as our free pick is concerned, that's in baseball on Thursday, and we'll get to that in a second. A quick Quick reminder, don't forget we've got a big elite level play going on Thursday in Major League Baseball, available at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time at DocSports.com. 3-0 with these plays last week. Let's make it four straight wins going back to the start of last week on Thursday's Diamond Card. Let's get to our free pick in baseball for Thursday. Looking at the battle between the Cubs and the Cardinals in St. Louis. Lester and Flaherty taking a, a trip to the mound for their two respective teams in this one. Right now, Chicago short dog as I speak, around $1.12 to a dollar 15 in that neighborhood and when i look at flarity and what he's done thus far against the cubs this year for instance 14 and a third innings pitched his team gave up 17 runs in those three games that he started against the cubs he averaged less than five runs per start in those three outings and uh, he had a hefty home runs per nine innings pitch ratio of about two and a half in those games his whip was right around a dollar 40 buck 40 so to speak uh, 1.4 in those games as far as Flaherty's whip against the Cubs so far this year. And when you look at Lester, I think he gets the job done here. St. Louis at home in night games against lefties, they've not been uh, really good. I mean, a little over four runs, about 4.3 runs per game. And the Cubs bats have been much better in road night games against righties than the Cards have been at home in night games against lefties. So we like the offense advantage. We like the pitching advantage in this particular game. And when you look at the Chicago Cubs, uh, and with John Lester on the mound against St. Louis, Lester has actually won six of the last eight times that they faced the Cardinals. I should say the Cubs have won six of his last eight starts. So I like the way Lester handles the St. Louis Cardinals for the most part. The Cubs tend to give him support. I think they will here. Again, they do well on the road in night games against righties, and I think they'll get to Flaherty like they've done, you know, for most of the three times they faced him so far this season. Going to take the Cubs and Lester, your free pick for Thursday at DocSports.com. The Cubs short dog to the St. Louis Cardinals as I cut this video. All right, that's going to do it for us for Thursday. Take advantage of that daily and weekly 25% offer that I told you about over at DocSports.com. Again, it's good from 4 a.m. Eastern on Thursday through 11 p.m. Eastern on Thursday. Goes right back to the regular price after that. Baseball, WNBA, 25% off daily and weekly packages only. It's going to do it for us for Thursday. I'm Scott Spritz at DocSports.com. If you like these videos, click on that thumbs up button. Be sure to subscribe. Let's put Thursday in the win column right back here Friday, 5 a.m. Eastern, 2 a.m. Pacific.